Bio Alliance Kitchen. I'm Kristen McGregor, Director of Marketing and Communications for Food Island Partnership and a registered dietitian. And I'm so excited. We are so lucky to be joined by Chef Iona Daniels. And let me just tell you a little bit about Iona Daniels. Now, she is the founder of Tribe Fresh um, Events and Consulting. She has over 15 years being a leader and building businesses all across this globe. I'm talking about Asia, North America, Europe, China. Wow, just so much. And not only, she's also a food editor for Harrow Smith uh, Publishing as well. So amazing. And then let's not forget, she's also a culinary instructor for the Culinary Institute of Canada, which is located right here in Prince Edward Island, Canada's food island. So, Laura, what are we making today? Well, today we're celebrating oysters and mussels. And I thought I wanted to take us on a little bit of a flavor vacation because we're not really traveling as much as we'd like to. So we're going to go to, uh, we're going to go to China, we're going to go to Iberia, and we're going to do some really kind of fun recipes that are a little bit of a departure from the usual garlic and butter. Right. You know, spice it up a little bit and we're going to utilize uh, our, an air fryer today and show you how easy it is to bake up oysters. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to start working on our Cantonese garlic sauce oysters. Now this is a pretty easy recipe, so what we want to do, we're going to sweat off our aromatics, and this is always a aroma is important, right? Like all of those senses need to be engaged, and I find that when we bake oysters, garlic is always a good thing. It is a good thing. So we're going to start off with a little bit of vegetable oil, and we've got, of course, our, our garlic Oh, I love that smell of fresh garlic. It's so good. That, that's how everyone knows it's like time to eat. Oh, I know. And the antioxidant power is there. We have ginger there too. So good for the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we have some shallots and some ginger. And I think this is really important not to be afraid to use lots of ginger in this recipe. You want the flavors to pop. And actually, this recipe is really commonly used on shellfish. But typically, you'll see this on things like scallops on the half shell. Oh. So it was pretty cool. Um, so I thought, how do we PEI this up? And I thought this would be perfect for our oysters today. So all we're going to do is sweating. So okay. we talk about sweating our aromatics. We don't want any color. Ah. Okay. So we just want to cook things, soften everything up, um, and not and no browning. We just want it to be soft. You have and that about medium high heat. Medium heat is good. Because if you're like me, I might be doing other things where I might be starting to shuck my oysters. Right. Medium. Take your time. It's all good. No Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And we'll know that it's starting to get into a good place when, again, those aromas start. Oh, you can smell it now. It's yeah. so good in here. When your mouth starts to water a little bit, you're starting to go to a good place. Oh, I love it. It is a time of year to sweat, isn't it? I'm sure yeah. you have lots of intentions out there, maybe working out a little bit more. So you can sweat and you can get your aromatics to sweat, too. I love it. Yeah. And ginger, yeah, is def definitely so good for this time of year oh, health-wise, so right? good. Oh, I just love the antioxidant power of ginger. So good in common if you have colds or flu, having ginger, putting it in tea, drinking it, and adding it to your food to that antioxidant boost, which is so great. Exactly. So what we're going to end up doing is making almost like a salad dressing, essentially. You want to think about it this way, but it's going to be warm. So while we're letting this sweat, we have some oyster sauce which we're gonna double down to that really deep umami flavor. So we're gonna pop that into our bowl. And you can find all of these ingredients at the grocery store readily. There's nothing really too wild here. And if you don't feel like, I'm, we're gonna add in some sambal olek. Now sambal olek is uh, Indonesian uh, chili paste. And I love this. It's kind of got a little bit of tang to it. But you're free to use any kind of chili paste you want. If you want to do the sriracha, go for it. If you want to go with the Korean gochujang, have at it. Yes, you can use Maritime Mag as a local PEI business and adding a little <laughs> that way too. So, so their cilantro lime is one of my oh, favorite. Yeah. Awesome. So you can do that as well. So this is just a technique. You don't have to be bound by exactly the recipe. So we're going to add a little bit of soy. Not too much because we know our oysters are naturally salty from that kiss from the sea and we want to make sure there's a little bit of acidity so I'm just using some vinegar here or you can use lime juice it's up to you I'm just gonna pop these out of the way I say it's smelling so so good in here and here's a fun fact if you eat fish or shellfish 
Just eating fish or shellfish twice a week has been proven by research to help lower your risk of heart disease, as well as they're now finding with new research that it might even help boost your mental health as well. So yeah. I'm glad you're sharing these recipes with us. And there's so many good micronutrients too, yes, right? Those, uh, the iron and all those good things you need in there. So looks like we've got a good sweat on our veggies. And we don't want, as I said, no color, looks awesome. So we're gonna take our aromatics and we're gonna add that into our sauce. I must say, it smells so good in here, wow. Yeah, and that's pretty simple, coming together and we're just gonna give this a little stir. So really, you can see, this is almost like I said, like a salad dressing. This would, yeah. this would taste good on some noodles too. Oh, I was just gonna say, I put that on quinoa or noodles and toss it in. Yeah. Oh my gosh, so good. Yeah. Protein. Yeah, and you can, you know, we're gonna do a really cool recipe with our mussels, but this would also work as a base. You know, add a little bit of local beer. Oh, great idea. A little bit of Commons Pilsner from upstream would be awesome. And then you have this nice Cantonese style um, mussel dish. So this is very versatile. So I'm gonna let you do some honors here. Why don't, oh, we, thank you. Why don't we do a little slippage over our oysters? We wanna just make sure that we're covering the uh, meat. Okay. Give them a little blankie. Oh my gosh, this is so good. I guess you could eat it just like this if you wanted to as well. Oh, like absolutely, yeah. Today, but this looks absolutely fantastic. And this is nice because a lot of times when we're doing baked oysters, we often are putting a lot of butter yeah. or breadcrumbs. And this is just a really simple, recipe that has a lot of flavor, it's concentrated, right? We're using that soy oh, sauce yeah. and the chili sauce. So those are really big flavors and it's pretty easy to come together. That wow, looks so great. Yeah. How did I do, Chef? You know what, put a little bit more. Let's, All yeah. right, let's just add this in. I like it. You know, <laughs> yeah, I'm always about, you know, they don't say less is more sometimes, but sometimes more is more. <laughs> and this will bubble up really nicely in yeah. our air fryer. So we've got our air fryer set to 400 degrees we're gonna bake this for about four to five minutes and then we're ready to eat. What's really nice about this, you can garnish it with a little bit of cilantro if you want, a little bit of chives. You don't have to, but it's always nice. And I like to serve with a little bit of lime wedges or lemon. Awesome. Okay, these look perfect. Do you want to get those in the air fryer for me? Yeah. Okay. Your, your next. okay. Oh no, I'm so excited to eat those. I know, me too. And be distracted. Okay, so the next recipe we're going to be working on is my Iberian chorizo and chickpea steamed mussels. So Iberia is a beautiful southern kind of peninsula that's occupied by Spain and Portugal. So think sunshine, warm weather, and this recipe is going to be a mussel dish that's also going to kind of eat like a meal. So it's going to have kind of a hearty quality to it. So to start this recipe. We're gonna use some olive oil because that would be what you would find in that neck of the wood. So we wanna keep our flavors authentic. Nice. And we're going to, again, we're gonna do that sweaty, or again, sauteing. We don't wanna add color to our onions, but we just want to make sure that they get translucent. And right, we're gonna do these in batches, so. Sounds good. Go. <laughs> so we're just gonna to have to. Smell that in. Yes, okay. <laughs> All right, I think we have. Okay. We just have too many good things going on here. Yeah. <laughs> well, if we need to pop it into another outlet, the air fry is no big deal. Okay, so as I said, I'm sweating off these onions. I've got a white onion. Uh, and again, when you saute it this way, it becomes sweeter. We're enhancing the sweetness. So it's not going to have that hot onion taste. So, you know what? I say one cup or one large onion, but it's it's okay if you have a little bit more than a cup or a little bit less. It's not going to end the world. Uh, I know a lot of my friends are very particular about recipes that it has to be, but onions and garlic, those sort of things, you have some leeway. So we're going to allow this to sweat. So one of the ingredients that I have in here is our chickpeas. And what I'm going to do is give them a little bit of a mash, just some of them because I want to add a little bit of texture and body to our sauce. As I said, this is um, kind of like a soup in a way. And it's perfect for this kind of cold weather that we're having today. It is chilly. Oh my gosh, that's so great. So maybe you want to do a little bit Absolutely. of mashing for me. I bet you could also use a potato masher if you wanted or throw this into your Nutribullet just to make it yeah. super fast and easy. And you don't have to do 
do this part, but I just like to add a little bit of blood into the sauce. And oh wow, it's a workout this time of year too. I feel like my arms too. So <laughs> right. fine. Yeah. So if your if your uh, uh, resolution was to do a little bit yes. of uh, working out, maybe then here we go. Cool. Then here we go. This is just what I needed. Exactly. How did you know? How did you know? Now what I love about this too is when you rinse any kind of canned beans or lentils, you can also reduce up to thirty percent of the sodium. Oh, by really? just rinsing it. So simple. And okay. I have a hot tip as well. This doesn't probably match skin enough. Yeah. Okay. And I think we I'll let you add that in for sure. I think maybe we can. That looks so great. Okay. And so we're going to add in some garlic again because that's always an awesome thing to do. Oh, that's so great. Wow, well, I can really see that sweating a bit too. This is a Spanish style sausage. Mm -hmm. Lots of paprika, lots of garlic. So this is, you don't really have to worry about adding a lot of spices to this. We've got our onions as our base. Okay. We're going to add in our chorizo. So good. And a little tip is to remove that skin, eh? So it's not as like hard and crunchy a little bit. Yep. So great. Yep. Now, if you didn't have chorizo, could you use something else like pancetta or Yep. You anything? can use pancetta. You can use bacon. You okay. can use some smoked ham. Okay. Really, any of those things are fine. This is just to give us a little taste of a little far off. I love it. You're transporting me there. I can feel the sun in my face. Oh. Yep. It smells so wonderful in here. It's so great. And then we'll add in our chickpeas. Great. What I also love about chickpeas too is it's a great plant-based way to get some fiber in there as well. So Yeah, and I thought this great. would be a good way. It goes really well. It has neutral flavor, so it's going to go really nice with the mussels and you're going to end up having basically a nice meal. So it's not just a little appetizer. This is something that's a little it's more hearty. Yeah. It's so great. I wish you could smell in here. Oh my gosh, it smells it's so incredible in here. Yep. I just love it. And I would have never thought to put chickpeas in muffles, to be honest. All right. I know. Such a smart idea. And we also want to give a shout out to our friends at Atlantic Aqua. We're so excited. We're going to be we're using Atlantic Aqua mussels and their Island Kiss oysters today as well. So we just want to give a shout out to them. Oh, big love. Very yes. PEI Prime. We love it. Yes, yes, thank you, Atlantic Aqua. All right, so now we're going to add in some white wine. Gotta love that. So we're gonna add in about two cups. And this is what's gonna give some body to our muscle dish. Mm -hmm. Now for those of you watching thinking, why are we creating a healthy recipe with wine? Mona, does it, tell us a little bit about that. So as we cook the wine, the alcohol is going to cook off. We're going to get a lot of really nice flavors, acidity, and it's going to balance out the richness of the chorizo, and it's going to pull well with the sea flavor of our mussels. Now again, when we're picking our mussels out, it's important that we want a mussel that's heavy for its size. We don't want something that's light. So the idea is, as a mussel gets a little bit older, the water is going to evaporate or it's going to dissipate, and they're going to end up with a mussel that's not as fresh. And when you we want to make sure the shell is closed. Mm -hmm. And also, give it a smell. Oh, so good. It should, it smell, smell, more. It should <laughs> smell like the sea. If it smells like something that's fishy, that's Never good. not a good thing. So it should smell like the ocean or the sea foam, that sort of thing. And a fun fact, if you're wondering, like, how much muscles do I need for each person? In one pound of muscles, there's typically about 21 of these beauties. So that's a good size for an appetizer. But the way that we're working on this dish, that we're adding our chickpeas and chorizo, it can be a little more substantial. So you can have this as a main course. Love it. Right? Okay, so we've got a nice bubble on the go. Nice. We're gonna add in our mussels. Here we go. It's time to flex your muscles. Add them in, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what I also love about mussels too is that they're low in calories, high in protein. But also an excellent source of omega-3. Omega-3 is so important for good health, from heart to brains, even eye development, even uh, boosting mental health as well. So I love that uh, we're using muscles today. And they're so affordable. So affordable, so great. So I love, one of the, one of the things I love to do is if I'm gonna have like a get together with friends, we're gonna have a, a shellfish party. Right. I might make like three or four different sauces, oh. or I'll buy 10 pounds of mussels or 15 pounds of mussels. Everyone brings in a loaf of bread, so great. and then you have all these different sauce mussels, and it's not going to break the bank. That sounds like a great idea. And yeah. you're getting protein, right? Like, that's so great. I love it. And everyone gets excited to dip this and oh, like that, yeah. so that's good. How do we get these ideas? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay, so why don't we pop that back there? Perfect. 
So I think our I think our oysters should be ready. Take a little peek. Here. And so these again are oh wow yeah, those look awesome. That is great. So those are our Sweet Island Kiss oysters from Atlantic Aqua Farms. Oh my gosh, should I get that up for you? Yeah, that'd be awesome. And again, so we're picking out our oysters. Again, it's important that we're looking for something that's heavy for its size. So when it feels light, you know that it's a drier oyster. We want to make sure that there's a lot of that delicious brine in there. That's super important. And it should smell like the sea, once again, or the sea foam. Depending on the depth of which those oysters are grown, you're going to get a little bit of a different marouar. Oh, nice. So if you're deeper down, yeah. you might get a little bit more of that deep, almost like pickle brine. Okay. And if something's being uh, grown a little bit closer to the surface, you might get some more of that sea foam kind of taste. So great. And what I love about it being so healthy is that they often call oysters the uh, multivitamin of the sea just because they're so high in immunity boosting zinc. They're also going to have magnesium. Again, they're going to be a source of protein as well. And oh my goodness, just look at these. Right, wow. so you did not believe or recall the extra oh sauce. Gosh, a little extra sauce. I mean, I'm going to be getting saucy now. Thank you. Yeah. Mona, well, no, I'll be thinking of you every time. And how do we garnish these beans? Okay, so if you want to garnish, we can add in, as I said, a little bit of cilantro. I'm a big fan of cilantro. I kind of. You either like it or don't. So if you like it, great. And if not, don't worry about it. And if you don't like it, you can use basil, no problem. Oh, basil is a great idea. A little bit of green onion is always nice. Because oh I like to have those deep flavors of like that chili oh, yeah. and a soy and the oyster sauce. But you want to bring it up with a little bit of acidity and also something yeah. fresh like the green onions. And I really like that. And if you're gonna be wild, let's do a little. Whoa, that's at a lively splash of lime. Wow. A little fresh citrus is always nice, and it goes a long way. And what I love is that if you're not a fan of eating raw oysters, this is a great option to enjoy oysters that you could probably get the whole family on board with. I'm gonna show them a little closer look because this is just absolutely <laughs> amazing. I cannot wait to try this. Look at this, folks. We're talking about baked oysters right out of the air fryer. Oh my goodness. Doesn't that look absolutely fantastic? Maybe you'll give us some hearts or some likes if you like it. And don't worry, we will be posting the recipes after this event as well. Gosh, it smells so good. I guess yeah. I should let it cool down a bit before I tuck it in the piece. I know. I'm like, I'm like can we? Do you think it's time? Or? Well, you know what? Let's do it. I think we should. Should we do it? I think we should. I think we should. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, I can't even get enough of it. We're definitely going to burn our tongues, though. We are. Nobody judge us. I mean, it's like <laughs> eating pizza right out of the oven. Mm. Wow, there is like a burst of flavor, mm -hmm. uh, just flavor sensation. I love that little heat, that little bit of lively lime. Oh my goodness. Isn't that so nice? This is going to be now one of my go-to recipes. And it's so simple. So simple. Oh my gosh, I love it. And you can just keep loading them into the air fryer batch after batch. Oh my so goodness. So you have a little bit of time to shuck. Yeah. Get them in. Shuck some That's more. right. And if you didn't have an air fryer, could I put this on a baking sheet and do it in the oven just in case? 100%. Put it at 400, 425. It'll take you about seven minutes in the oven. Okay. If you have a convection oven, put that on. The hot air circulating really makes a difference. You can do these on the barbecue as well. In direct heat would work well. Yeah. So if <laughs> if you wanted to, there's you can do them on any kind of heated. Maybe everyone comment below. How are you making this recipe? Are you going to be grilling it? Are you going to bake it? Or are you going to put it in the air fryer? Comment below. We'd love to know. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Should we check our muscles? Yep. Yeah. All right. Oh my gosh, I'm so. We're excited. definitely have to make it. We're going to make these batch. Yeah. Batch in here. I'll be going over here busy in just a few moments. Wow, that is so good. Hmm. All right, here we go. Let me just carry this over for you. Okay. I'm going to need to work today, everyone. Look at this. It's like you can almost do squats and everything with this. You get a nice little workout. All right. All right. Wow. It smells delicious. Oh, wow. Look at that nice consistency with those chickpeas in there, too. And look at those muscles. They're opening up to say hello and get into my belly. Woo! We'll just hold on to that. Yep. So that's awesome. Happy with that. Looking so good. So mussels take about seven to eight minutes. You want to make sure the lid is on there. Right. Let that steam. And once one of the tricks is once you see all that steam kind of coming out the outside of your pan. Right. Okay. You're ready to go. go. Alright, I can take that off. Perfect. I'll move this over. Put this up. Oh my gosh, that looks so great. Do you want to show our Oh my gosh, I have to show our friends. This is incredible. Holy cow, I wish you could <laughs> smell this. I cannot wait to tuck into this. I feel healthier already. Look at this. Isn't that look absolutely incredible? Holy cow, wow. 
Or right here, we're going to put this under the top. Yes, so absolutely. Just to try it, you pour it there. There you go. I don't know if that works better. Yeah. And popping more of these things into the air fryer. Yeah. Here while we're doing that, because I mean, it's just too good. One is not going to be enough. One is not going to be enough. My life is not complete until I have a whole bunch more. And this is a really elegant appetizer, I find. Gosh, that looks amazing. And you can serve some of the wine that you cooked, that you used for the cooking. So you're suggesting we don't drink it while we're cooking then? Well, a little bit of both, or maybe okay. getting a second bottle is fine. Okay, which is always good. And if I didn't like wine, is there anything else that I could use instead of wine? Absolutely. You could use, um, you could use some clam juice, chicken oh, stock, egg nice. stock. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of great options. I love it. As I said, these are all just sort of kind of flavor profiles and techniques. You don't have to uh, be stuck. <gasps> oh my gosh, voila, look at this, folks. Oh my gosh, that is just so beautiful. So much beauty in a, in a dish, really. Mm -hmm. And I love what I love about this time of year. The colder months of the year are the really the best times to enjoy our Prince Edward Island mussels and oysters. Because they get a little bit more plump, like I think we do when we're trying to stay warm over the holidays in the winter. Um, so I think these look awesome. Oh gosh, so good. And as I said, right with the chickpeas and the chorizo, you really got a substantial meal. It looks amazing. Wow, yeah. so good. All right, folks, this is coming to the end of our Facebook Live today. But we want to hear from you. If you're enjoying our Facebook Lives with our incredible chefs from all over Prince Edward Island, we want to know in the comments below. What do you want to learn? What do you want to know? And how can we be of service to you? Until next time, take care and thanks so much.